Powered by PFF Elite, here's your breakdown of the Tampa Bay Bucks' 26-24 victory over the Miami Dolphins. On offense for the Bucks, every quarterback played well. Jameis Winston kicked it off with Brian Fitzpatrick and Ryan Griffin also playing well. The three combined to go 12 for 13 for 186 yards on intermediate throws, with Griffin going 5 for 5 for 70 yards himself. On the defensive side, all eyes were on the revamped Bucks defensive line, and they didn't disappoint in their first showing. Jason Pierre-Paul had a QB hit and three stops in his debut, while Vinny Curry added two hurries and a QB hit. On offense for the Miami Dolphins, QB Brock Osweiler was a little better than the stats would show as four of his 11 incompletions were drops. Wide receiver Francis Owosu had a nice game with four catches for 82 yards, three of which went for first downs. On the defensive side of the ball, rookie first rounder Minka Fitzpatrick got off to a solid start, allowing only one catch on three targets for 12 yards, while it was Jonathan Woodard stealing the show up front with three pressures and four stops, the best player on the defense for Miami in this one. For a full breakdown on the Bucks Dolphins game, be sure to get your PFF Elite package and go check out Premium Stats 2.0. Powered by PFF Elite, here's your breakdown of the Cincinnati Bengals 30-27 victory over the Chicago Bears. For the Bears on offense, the starters were limited, so starting quarterback Mitchell Trubisky played only 10 snaps. But it was tight end Adam Shaheen who posted the highest grade at 92.6. He had 53 receiving yards, including 31 after the catch. Up front, Will Precheck had a fine game playing both center and guard. He had a 92.4 run blocking grade, and he didn't allow a pressure on 44 snaps. On defense for the Bears, Kasim Adebali had a team-high three pressures while adding two stops on his way to the highest grade at 92.3. Safety DeAndre Houston Carson made his pitch for a roster spot, and while the Bears linebackers struggled throughout the game, Nick Kwiatkowski was a bright spot, and he had an 81.8 grade, continuing his strong play from 2017. On the offensive side for the Bengals, their playmakers showed up, with A.J. Green and Joe Mixon both grading well in their limited time. It was a mixed bag for 2017 first-rounder John Ross, who was targeted five times, catching one pass for 20 yards, including 15 yards after the catch. However, he did fall down on Andy Dalton's interception. Up front, Christian Westerman had a fine game with 29 clean snaps and pass protection. On the defensive side for the Bengals, the defensive line looked great, with Geno Atkins dominating on his few snaps and Carl Lawson getting after the quarterback. The Bengals continue their strong play on the defensive line. On the back end, it was Darquez Denard and Kavari Russell allowing only 23 yards on six targets. Powered by PFF Elite, here's your breakdown of the Cleveland Browns' 20-10 victory over the New York Giants. On offense for the Browns, the quarterbacks looked great, starting with Tyrod Taylor going 3-for-3 three three on passes of 10-plus yards, and then number one overall pick Baker Mayfield made his debut showing the accuracy that made him PFF's number one prospect in the NFL draft last season. Mayfield was 6-for-11 on his 10-plus yard passes, including a couple tight window throws on slants and in the end zone to tight end David Njoku, who caught two touchdowns on his only two targets. The other standout on the offense for the Browns was wide receiver Rashard Higgins, who caught four of his five targets for 66 yards, and he picked up three first downs. On the defensive side for the Browns, cornerback Denzel Rice allowed only nine yards on three targets. Linebacker Jermaine Grace did a nice job keeping the ball in front of him in coverage, while defensive tackle Caleb Brantley notched a team high three stops. On offense for the Giants, all eyes were on the number two pick in the draft, Saquon Barkley, who dazzled the crowd on his first carry for 39 yards but also had only four yards on his next four carries, so he showed some of the boomer busts that came with his game coming out of Penn State. At quarterback, Davis Webb was terribly inaccurate, throwing seven uncatchable passes on 23 attempts. That's leading the league this weekend. Webb is only 0 for 6 on 10-plus yard throws, while quarterback Kyle Loletta, the rookie fourth rounder, showed to promise in his limited time. On defense, the starters played only 11 total snaps, so it was edge defender Avery Moss who stood out. He did a lot of damage in the run game, finishing at 87.8. Linebacker Calvin Munson had a nice game, tying for a team high with five stops. For a full breakdown of the Browns-Giants game, be sure to check out Premium Stats, all a part of your PFF Elite package. Powered by PFF Elite, here's the breakdown as the Baltimore Ravens beat the Los Angeles Rams 33-7. Joe Flacco and the starters at least got on the field this week after sitting out the Hall of Fame game opener. But the star of the show was Orlando Brown Jr., who stayed in as the rest of the starting offensive line took a seat and played another 40 snaps. Across 35 pass-blocking snaps, he didn't surrender a single pressure and earned an overall PFF grade of 81.6. 
After an ugly Hall of Fame game outing last week, Rashad Perryman redeemed himself with three catches for 71 yards and a touchdown to lead the offense in overall PFF grade. Edge rusher Tim Williams on the defensive side of the ball continued to flash pass rushing skills that the Ravens badly need to tap into this season, with a sack and three total pressures to go along with his five from a week ago. His overall grade of 89.5 was the second best on the Ravens' defense, trailing only cornerback Maurice Kennedy thanks to his interception. The starting offense for the Rams took the night off, leaving Sean Mannion to lead the offense that got pretty much smoked by the Baltimore Ravens' first-team defense. Only one player on that Rams' offense had an overall PFF grade higher than 71, and that was guard Jake Eldrickham who split time between left and right guard, yet didn't surrender any pressure. Defensive lineman Ethan Westbrooks is a proven preseason stud and backed that up yet again with an overall PFF grade of 82.7, the best mark on the Rams defense. Westbrooks had two sacks and three total pressures as the standout performer on that unit. For the full breakdown, check out Premium Stats 2.0 as part of your PFF Elite subscription. Powered by PFF Elite, here's your breakdown of the Green Bay Packers' 31-17 victory over the Tennessee Titans. For the Titans on offense, the starters only played nine snaps together, opening the door for unsung players to stand out. Second-year player Corey Levin split time between center and guard, and he was perfect in pass protection on 36 attempts. Rookie sixth-round QB Luke Falk went 10 for 19 for 105 yards, but he was only 2 for 8 on passes thrown at least 10 yards in the air. On defense, second round rookie Harold Landry should have been a first rounder and he looked like it, posting the highest grade and picking up a strip sack as well as another hurry on his 13 rushes. Linebacker Darren Bates led the team with a 90.4 grade against the run while picking up four stops. Though Aaron Rodgers didn't play, Brett Hundley and Deshaun Kaiser were able to make big plays in this game and rack up points against the Titans defense. Devontae Adams caught both of his targets for 57 yards before retiring to the sideline, but rookie receivers Marquez Valdez-Scantling and Equinemius St. Brown combined to catch nine passes for 162 yards and a touchdown. Valdez-Scantling ended up with the best grade on the Green Bay offense at 90.7, edging out Hundley and some of the Packers' offensive linemen. With five total pressures on 19 pass-rushing snaps, Edge rusher Reggie Gilbert was the star of the show while running with the Green Bay starters. He earned an overall PFF grade of 80.9, just ahead of linebacker Ahmad Thomas, who outperformed rookie Oren Burks, who the Packers are relying on to start since injuries have struck the team in training camp. For the full breakdown, check out Premium Stats 2.0 as part of your PFF Elite subscription. Powered by PFF Elite, here's the breakdown as the Dallas Cowboys fell to the San Francisco 49ers on the road, 21-24. The Dallas starters played just 10 snaps before taking a seat, but Zach Martin and Dak Prescott earned the best two grades on the team and would have featured in the top five grades had they played a little longer. New acquisition Tavon Austin led the offense in PFF grade with a mark of 77.8 thanks to catching a couple of passes, both of which went for first downs, but after the starters left the field, this was not a vintage performance from the Cowboys offense. On defense, linebacker Joe Thomas took advantage of his start to lead the team in PFF grade with 92.9 overall mark on 22 snaps of action. Thomas led the team with three defensive stops and also snagged an interception in coverage. Jimmy Garoppolo played just nine snaps with the 49ers starters, completing three of six passes for 34 yards, but the standout of quarterback for the team was second-year undrafted free agent Nick Mullins out of Southern Miss. Mullins completed 11 of 13 passes for 141 yards, including five of his six passes under pressure. He was two for two on deep shots of 20 or more air yards and backed up some impressive PFF college grading. Linebacker Reuben Foster made one of the plays of the preseason, tracking a deep crossing route against the 49ers cover three defense and making a diving pass breakup on a well-thrown pass of the receiver. Foster ended with an overall PFF grade of 90.8, second best on the team behind safety Terrell Williams. Rookie cornerback DJ Reed also had a strong debut coming up quick to limit yardage after the catch and making two defensive stops. For the full breakdown, check out Premium Stats 2.0 as part of your PFF Elite subscription. Powered by PFF Elite, here's your breakdown on the Carolina Panthers' 28-23 victory over the Buffalo Bills. On offense for the Panthers, starting quarterback Cam Newton was limited to only 14 snaps, 
and QB Garrett Gilbert had a fine game, going 3 for 4 on 10 plus yard passes for 66 yards and a score on those throws. Rookie wide receiver DJ Moore had the highest grade for the Panthers on offense, catching all four of his targets for 75 yards, 7.3 yards after the catch, and three first downs. On the defensive side for the Panthers, cornerback Lorenzo Doss didn't allow a catch on his three targets, while rookie cornerback Rashawn Galden was solid and Brian Cox Jr. tied for the team lead with three pressures. For the Bills on offense, all three quarterbacks played well, from Nathan Peterman to A.J. McCarron to Josh Allen. The rookie completed four out of nine passes on 10-plus yard attempts, showing off his laser for an arm, but also some of the inaccuracy that marred his game in college. You can check out the full Josh Allen breakdown on the PFF YouTube channel. Veteran offensive tackle Marshall Newhouse had a nice game. He didn't give up a pressure on his 13 pass-blocking snaps. On the defense for the Bills, it was all about the young defensive linemen. Mike Love did a fantastic job against the run, while Eddie Yarbrough had a hit, hurry, and a batted pass. It was a really encouraging sign for the Bills up front with their backups. For the full breakdown on the Panthers-Bills game, be sure to get your PFF Elite package and go check out Premium Stats version 2.0. Powered by PFF Elite, here's your breakdown of the Pittsburgh Steelers' 31-14 victory over the Philadelphia Eagles. QB Nate Sudfeld got the start and finished with a 45.6 overall grade. He had a poor interception, misreading the coverage, but also fired a perfect deep pass for a 63-yard touchdown. Starting right guard Brandon Brooks was in midseason form with an 86.9 grade in his limited time. And then rookie Dallas Goddard showed off his playmaking ability with 66 yards on four receptions, three of which went for first downs. On the defensive side of the ball, the starters played only a handful of snaps, but it was good to see linebacker Jordan Hicks back on the field doing his usual fine work and coverage on his six snaps. Linebacker Leroy Reynolds made plays all over the field, finishing with a sack and three total stops. And then edge defender Stephen Means led the team with four total pressures on only 17 pass rushes. Not a vintage performance from the Steelers' offense, with rookie quarterback Mason Rudolph seeing some struggles and the highest-graded player topping out at 82.5 in PFF grade. Landry Jones was the best performer of the Steelers' quarterbacks, with Ben Roethlisberger not playing, and his performance rested almost entirely on a deep touchdown to Juju Smith-Schuster. Second-round pick James Washington caught two passes for 44 yards, outmuscling defensive backs down the field and picking up exactly where he left off at Oklahoma State and the Senior Bowl. On the other side of the ball, the Steelers' first team defense struggled, but some of the backups had excellent days. Cody Sensabaugh caught as many passes himself as he allowed to be caught by Eagles receivers with his one interception, earning an overall grade of 90.8. But Cameron Sutton, Javon Hargrave, and Malik Golden also had strong performances. Powered by PFF Elite, here's your breakdown on the New England Patriots' 26-17 victory over the Washington Redskins. Backup quarterback Brian Hoyer took the majority of the snaps for the Patriots, and his favorite target was wide receiver Devin Lucian, who caught four passes for 71 yards while picking up three first downs and forcing a missed tackle. The pass blocking was strong for the Patriots up front for the majority of the game, as no one player allowed more than a pressure, with Ted Karras really standing out at both left guard and center, Karras stayed clean on 16 pass protection snaps. On the defensive side for New England, it was rookie Jawan Bentley who really stood out with four stops and a QB hit. He's trying to live up to his PFF college potential where he was one of the best run stoppers in the nation. New acquisition Danny Shelton did a fine job with two stops in the run game, and Patriots fans were excited to see Dante Hightower back on the field playing a little bit more of an edge roll where he rushed the passer seven times, picking up one pressure. For the Redskins on offense, running back Darius Geis looked great, but then he tore his ACL. He had an 85.8 grade before going down to the injury, and the rookie was expected to be a huge part of the Redskins offense. That's going to be a big loss in Washington. At quarterback Colt McCoy did the majority of the work, and he went 4 for 6 on passes of 10 plus yards, while also throwing two touchdowns while under pressure. On the defensive side, rookie cornerback Greg Stroman posted the top grade after giving up only two catches on five targets. It was also good to see linebacker Sean Dion Hamilton on the field after battling injuries at Alabama. He finished with four stops and a 90.8 grade in coverage. Pass rush was a bit of a concern for Washington as they only had seven total pressures and no one player had more than one. For a full breakdown on the Patriots-Redskins game, be sure to get your PFF Elite package and check out Premium Stats 2.0. Powered by PFF Elite, here's the breakdown as the Houston Texans beat the Kansas City Chiefs 17-10 in Week 1 of the preseason. 
Deshaun Watson did make his return from injury in this game just nine months after tearing his ACL during the regular season. He saw just five snaps, four of which were handoffs, but that marks an important milestone for the young quarterback. After Watson departed, it was Joe Webb and Brandon Whedon that took snaps for the Texans at quarterback, and while Webb made some flashy plays, it was Whedon that looked the better quarterback, earning an overall PFF grade of 77.4 and completing all five of his passes under pressure. On defense, we're going to have to wait a little to see J.J. Watt, Jadevian Clowney, and Whitley Merciless attacking quarterbacks together, but the Texans look well-stocked for pass rushers even without them, with rookie Duke Ajiofor notching five total pressures and Ufamba Kamalu notching an 89.9 overall grade thanks to winning on 36% of his pass rushing snaps. For the Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes and their starters saw just two short drives in the first quarter before taking a seat on the bench, but some backup players on offense did step up in their stead. Demarcus Robinson caught three passes for 48 yards, including a beautiful deep touchdown from Chad Henney down the right sideline on a stop and go move. Rookie undrafted free agent quarterback Chase Litton also had a nice day, earning an overall grade of 75.8, thanks to completing seven out of 10 pass attempts from a clean pocket. The Chiefs' second team defense really stood out in this game, with multiple linebackers earning top end PFF grades, including Raymond Davidson and Ben Neiman. That pair combined for six defensive stops and were a big part of the Chiefs, limiting the impact of that Texans offense. With a full breakdown, Check out Premium Stats 2.0 as part of your PFF Elite subscription. Powered by PFF Elite, here's your breakdown of the Indianapolis Colts' 19-17 victory over the Seattle Seahawks. Starting with Seattle on offense, it was offensive tackle Jamarco Jones who posted the highest grade. The rookie did not give up a pressure on his 11 pass-blocking snaps, and he did a really nice job in the run game as well. On the defensive side of the ball, cornerback Justin Coleman continued his breakout after a really nice 2017 season. He broke up the only pass thrown his way. On the other side of the ball, the Colts' offense was excited to see Andrew Luck make his return. He was officially 0 for 1 on 10 plus yard throws as they kept it easy for him, but it was great to see him back on the field and actually throwing passes. Wide receiver Kaysen Williams has been outstanding in the preseason the last two years, and that continued 46 yards on three catches, including two missed tackles forced. On the defense for the Colts, it was Hassan Ridgeway who posted the highest grade because he had five pressures two sacks, three hurries on his 15 rushes. He also added another stop in the running game. For more on the Colts Seahawks game, be sure to get your premium stats all a part of your PFF Elite package. Powered by PFF Elite, here's your breakdown of the New Orleans Saints 24 to 20 victory over the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jags looked great in their new teal uniforms and starting quarterback Blake Bortles Although he attempted only nine passes, he dropped in a beautiful deep ball to wide receiver D.D. Westbrook, though he was unable to haul it in. Westbrook did have a nice game after that, though, picked up three first downs on his three receptions. And then Casey McDermott had a solid game, allowing only one pressure on 16 attempts at left guard. Linebacker Miles Jack showed off his athleticism with a pass breakup on one of only three targets. He played nine snaps on the night. Rookie cornerback Quinton Meeks broke up the only pass thrown his way, while Lorente McRae notched a team-high six hurries on his way to an 80.8 overall grade. With Drew Brees chilling on the sidelines, former Houston Texans quarterback Tom Savage got the start for the Saints, and that went about as well as you would have expected. Though his numbers were okay, he had one turnover-worthy throw and an average depth of target of just 3.3 yards down the field. Right guard Larry Warford was the best performer on that Saints offense, a unit that struggled at times against an elite Jacksonville defense. He allowed no pressure at all, but also graded well as a run blocker. Rookie wide receiver Traquan Smith caught four or five targets, including a couple of nice crossing routes that generated some strong yards after the catch. Jaron Elliott was one of the stars of preseason week one with an overall PFF grade of 97.9 thanks to three sacks on 14 pass rushing snaps. He didn't have any more pressure than those three sacks, but they were big plays and earned him every bit of that grade. Elliott wasn't the only member of the Saints defensive front to earn an impressive grade though, with David Onyemata as well as linebacker Nate Stupar both also producing grades above 90 overall. Powered by PFF Elite, here's the breakdown as the Detroit Lions were beaten by the Oakland Raiders 16-10. Matt Castle got the start at quarterback for the Lions as Matthew Stafford was given the night off, but Castle did at least get to play with the rest of the starters for varying lengths of time. Rookie offensive lineman Frank Ragnow 
earned a solid grade in his debut that fell just outside of the top five, but fellow rookie Carrion Johnson led the offense with a mark of 80.7 overall. Johnson gained 34 yards and seven carries, 23 of which came after contact thanks to breaking three tackles along the way, but he also chipped in with another 33 yards on four catches. On D, many of the Lions starters had impressive performances, with Darius Slay as good as anybody on his 12 snaps, but just failing to play enough to make our top five list. Linebackers Jonathan Freeney, Christian Jones, and Freddie Bishop all earned strong PFF grades in the 70s as the Lions suffocated the Oakland offense for large stretches of the game. Derek Carr and the rest of the starting Oakland offense wasn't on the field long, with Carr attempting just three passes, completing two of them for 11 yards, and coming up short on a deep shot that failed to draw the pass interference call it probably should have. After Carr took a seat, Connor Cook set about earning one of the best grades on the Oakland offense, completing 11 of 19 pass attempts for 141 yards and a score to new wideout Ryan Switzer. From a clean pocket, Cook was money, but when he felt the heat, he was just one of five for three yards. On defense, the Raiders saw some standout performances, with linebacker Marquell Lee and cornerback Antonio Hamilton both posting PFF grades above 90 overall. Defensive veteran Frosty Rucker also showed that he could still dominate against backups late in his career, recording a quarterback hit and displaying some impressive run defense against the Lions backups. For the full breakdown, check out Premium Stats 2.0 as part of your PFF Elite subscription. Powered by PFF Elite, here's your breakdown of the New York Jets' 17-0 victory over the Atlanta Falcons. Quarterback Matt Ryan attempted only one pass on the night for the Falcons, and it was rookie QB Kurt Bankert getting the majority of the work. Bankert finished with a 68.1 grade, and he went 3-4 for four for 80 yards on deep passes. Daniel Brunskill had the best game up front, allowing a QB hit on 26 pass-blocking snaps between tackle and guard. On the defensive side, starting linebacker Deion Jones played only three snaps, but he still managed to pick up a stop on each of those plays. Pretty incredible. Cornerback Leon McFadden had the top grade at 90.4, allowing a three-yard gain on his two targets. Demonte Casey was all over the field, picking up 10 tackles and a team-high five stops. On the other side, the Jets quarterback situation was one of the biggest storylines in the NFL this weekend as Teddy Bridgewater made his return and rookie first-rounder Sam Darnold made his debut. Bridgewater looked sharp, going 7 of 8 for 85 yards and a score, and he was 2 for 2 on his intermediate throws. Darnold lived up to the hype, showing poise in the pocket, completing all four attempts when under pressure. He showed the ability to make plays both inside and outside the pocket, just as he did at USC. On defense, the starters only played a handful of snaps, giving players like Dylan Donahue a chance to shine. He posted the top grade at 81 overall. New defensive lineman Henry Anderson managed a team-high four pressures on only 14 rushes, but he struggled to a 45.6 grade in the run game. For the full breakdown on the Jets-Falcons game, be sure to get your PFF Elite package and check out Premium Stats 2.0. Powered by PFF Elite, here's your breakdown of the Minnesota Vikings' 42-28 victory over the Denver Broncos. Vikings fans hope they got a glimpse of the future as quarterback Kirk Cousins connected with Stephon Diggs on three passes, including a big-time throw down the right sideline and a quick slant for a touchdown. When the backups took over, it was running back Rock Thomas' time to shine as he caught three passes for 102 yards and two scores while grading at 89.6 overall. QB Kyle Sloter continued his trend of impressive preseason outings, going 3-for-3 three three on 10-plus yard passes and leading the comeback in the fourth quarter. On defense, Jack Tocho gave up two touchdowns, but he also intercepted a pass and broke up two more on a team-high 56 snaps. It was rookie Jalen Holmes who had the best pass rushing performance for the Vikings, finishing with a team-high five pressures on just 21 rushes. For the Broncos, starting quarterback Case Keenum didn't have a chance to find any rhythm in his revenge game. He played only six snaps. Left guard Max Garcia played well in his extended action, staying clean in pass protection on 14 attempts while rookie running back Royce Freeman had an adventure of a day, weaving through the defense for a nice touchdown, but also allowing a pressure and dropping a pass. On the defensive side, the Broncos got good performances from backup defensive linemen as Shelby Harris had a hurry and a batted pass, while Zach Kerr picked up three stops. Safety Will Parks was all over the field, finishing with a team-high four stops, including a sack. For the full breakdown on the Vikings-Broncos game, be sure to check out Premium Stats, all a part of your PFF Elite package. Powered by PFF Elite, here's your breakdown of the Arizona Cardinals' 24-17 victory over the Los Angeles Chargers. Cardell Jones got the start at quarterback for the Chargers, and it was a mixed bag as he created at only 40.8 from a clean pocket, though he did make a few nice plays under pressure. 
He finished the game with a 55.8 grade, while Geno Smith was only slightly better at 62.6 as they battle for the backup job. Wide receiver Jeremy Davis posted the top grade on the offense, moving the chains or scoring a touchdown on all four of his receptions while also forcing a missed tackle. On defense, the Chargers got a number of strong performances as Damian Square led the team with three hurries, while rookie cornerback Brandon Fackerson didn't allow a catch and picked off a pass on his two targets. Fellow rookie Uchenna Nwosu also notched two hits and a batted pass, though he wasn't quite as clean in the run game or in coverage. As for the Cardinals, the offense featured a number of players returning back to health, including running back David Johnson, QB Sam Bradford, and right guard Justin Pugh. Johnson looked sharp on his two carries. Rookie quarterback Josh Rosen made his NFL debut, finishing only 35.8 on the day. He had a poor misread of underneath coverage for a dropped interception, though he did show good pocket presence on a 21-yard completion over the middle of the field. On defense, linebacker Jeremy Cash was making his presence felt with two hurries and two stops, but he went down due to injury and his season's now over. Cornerback Benny Ben Wickery had a fine game, allowing only 12 yards on his five targets while also forcing a fumble. And it was good to see second-year linebacker Hassan Riddick playing fast and flying to the ball as he picked up three stops on only 14 snaps. For the full breakdown on the Chargers-Cardinals game, be sure to grab your PFF Elite Package and get to your premium stats. <laughs>